everyone, welcome to 10 Minute Physiology. In today's video, I'm going to try to explain to you how the AMPA receptor works in synaptic transmission in under 10 minutes. So let's give it a go. So let's start off with a neuron. And what we're going to do with this neuron is we're going to zoom in at the synaptic terminal. Now inside the synaptic terminal, we have vesicles. And these vesicles are going to be packaged with neurotransmitters. The vesicles are going to be stored in a specialized region inside the synaptic terminal called the active zones. And these vesicles will not be released until a signal approaches them. And this signal is going to be originating from voltage-gated sodium channels. Now, action potentials are going to be propagating down the axon, and it will cause voltage-gated sodium channels to open. And when they open, this will cause sodium to flow into the cell. The sodium will then move into the synaptic terminal, depolarizing the membrane, opening voltage-gated calcium channels. Now when these voltage-gated calcium channels open, this will cause calcium to flow into the cell, which will increase the intracellular calcium level, which will then facilitate the fusion of the vesicle with the presynaptic membrane, releasing neurotransmitters into the synapse. Now the neurotransmitter that we're going to be focusing on today is glutamate. Now, glutamate can bind to a number of different receptors. However, the receptor that we're going to be focusing on is the AMPA receptor. Now, in the target cell, we see here an AMPA receptor. And the AMPA receptor is an ionotropic receptor. So, in other words, a ligand-gated ion channel. And it has four subunits, so it is a tetramer. Now, each of these subunits has a binding site for glutamate. And each of these binding sites is sort of going to be coupled to a gate. So in other words, when a glutamate binds to its binding site, it will cause a gate inside the receptor to open, allowing current to pass through. Now the maximum amount of current that can pass through this receptor will be passing through it when four glutamates are bound, each glutamate bound to its receptor. So what's going to happen is that when the glutamates bind to their receptors, the channel will be maximally open and it will be passing through the maximum amount of current that it can pass through it. Now, the ions that pass through this receptor are first going to be sodium. Now, when this channel is open, what's going to happen is that sodium will flow down its electrochemical gradient from the outside of the cell to the inside of the cell. The second ion is going to be calcium, and calcium will also be flowing down its electrochemical gradient from the outside of the cell to the inside of the cell. The last ion is going to be potassium, and potassium will be flowing down its electrochemical gradient from the inside of the cell to the outside of the cell. Now we have a lot of different ions moving in different directions through this open channel. So what is the net effect? Well, the net effect depends upon the membrane potential. And what we see here is that the graph is showing you how the net current through an open AMPA receptor varies with the membrane potential. So when we graph data obtained from an experiment where we vary the membrane potential and measure the current moving through the open AMPA receptor, we get the following data. So what we see in this graph here is that when the membrane potential is negative, the current moving through it is negative. Now remember that when current is negative, this means the current is moving from the outside of the cell to the inside of the cell. And remember that current is the movement of positive charge. So in other words, when the membrane potential is negative and the AMPA receptor is open, current will be moving into the cell and cause the cell to depolarize. So when the membrane potential is positive, we see that the current is positive. And this means that when the membrane potential is positive, current will be moving out of the cell and the cell will hyperpolarize. Now, one of the more important points on this graph is this point. And this point passing through the origin is the reversal potential. Now, the reversal potential for any channel is the membrane potential at which the net current through the channel is zero. So in other words, the current moving out of the cell is going to be equal through the, to the current moving into the cell through that receptor. And the reversal potential for the AMPA receptor is going to be around zero millivolts. So when the membrane potential is above the reversal potential, in this case zero millivolts, what we see for the AMPA receptor is that current will move out of the cell, causing the cell to hyperpolarize. And when the membrane potential is negative below zero millivolts, we see that the current is negative and current will move into the cell, causing the cell to depolarize. So now let's apply this to the cell. So here we have our target cell again, and inside the target cell we have the AMPA receptor. 
Now, let's just assume that we have four glutamates bound to the AMPA receptor, so therefore we have a maximum amount of current flowing through the cell. So when this receptor opens, the direction in which the current will flow through will be dependent upon the membrane potential. So when the membrane potential is negative, so this will be seen when the cell is at rest or at a hyperpolarized voltage, the current will be moving inward. So therefore, since the current is moving inward, this will cause the cell to depolarize. Now let's change the membrane potential to a positive voltage. So when the voltage is positive, the current will move in the opposite direction out of the cell, which will therefore cause the cell to hyperpolarize. So let's summarize everything we saw in this video. So in this video, we see that glutamate is an excitatory neurotransmitter. And the reason why it's excitatory is due to the fact that the resting potential of many cells is going to be negative or below zero millivolts. And when the membrane potential is below the reversal potential of zero millivolts for the AMPA receptor, when the AMPA receptor is open, it will pass an inward current causing a depolarization. Therefore, it is excitatory. We also saw that glutamate can bind to the AMPA receptor at four different binding sites. And we also saw that when the channel is open, it will allow sodium and calcium to flow into the cell and potassium to flow out. Now the AMPA receptor is a form of fast signaling because it is an ionotropic receptor or a ligand gated ion channel. And lastly, we saw is that the, when the membrane potential is below zero millivolts, the reversal potential, the current flows into the cell, depolarizing the cell. And when the membrane potential is above zero millivolts, the reversal potential, the current flows out of the cell, hyperpolarizing the cell. So I hope this helped you understand what AMPA receptors are. And I hope to see you in the next video where I'm going to talk about the second type of receptor that glutamate can bind to called the NMDA receptor. So I hope to see you there. Good luck on your studies and I hope to see you next time.